Christian Fair. Wow, great viewers out there. It's time for Sportsville. My name is George Alou. I hope you are set to roll with us. I must tell you that we too, we are here to fire on all cylinders and give you the best of sports on TV as we do week in, week out. And uh, there's a lot happening in sports, I must tell you. But the most disturbing being the news that broke on Friday that FIFA has hammered uh, former Super Eagles coach Samson Siasi. A very unfortunate development that is. We'll take a look at that on the show today. And then don't forget that uh, on a good side of it, uh, our, the Tigers are firing raw cylinders out there in Dakar. They are in the finals of uh, the Afro Basketball 2019, where they will later today by 7 p.m. be taking on host Senegal. The, the Tigers will be wonderful. While they are performing there, the male counterpart are preparing for China, where they are going for the World Cup. I mean, things are looking up for Nigerian basketball. When I talk about the All-Africa Games, it has started already in Rabat, Morocco, and then Nigeria is being to host the world next year in the female women's World Cup. Talk about the under 20 women's World Cup. We'll take a look at all that on the show for you today. It's a loaded package, I must tell you. Don't forget, it's equally a super Sunday as Chelsea take on Leicester. But after this break, then I'll come back to fire on all cylinders. Don't go away. It is Pulseville. And I'm not alone. Later, I'll be joined by Tony Wokomo Bani and Baby of the House, Oluchi Tobes Tobechuku. But after this break, we'll come back. Right, welcome back to the show. If you've just joined us, you've not missed much. And I must tell you that we'll start with the Siazia saga, so to speak. I mean, it was so unfortunate when that news broke on Friday that FIFA has slammed a life ban on Sans and Siazia. In fact, uh, the, uh, the War Soccer Gov the body said he's barred from all football activities, both administrative at national and international level. Samson Siasia has not come out to speak, but uh, his very close associate, Opokri Jones Ere, told the media on Saturday that uh, Samson Siasia is at the moment very stressed. You can see the clip of Opokri there addressing the media in Abuja. And uh, he said, uh, with the kidnap of the mother and this unfortunate development, that Sansia is stressed. But maybe within the week, Samson will come out to speak. But the mother has been handed over to his legal team. The lawyers are studying it. And uh, we just hope that uh, after that, Samson Siasia will react. And uh, here in Lagos, uh, we'll now talk to another very close associate of uh, uh, Samson Siasia, talk about uh, why they are connected, another ex international. He's, he shared his thought with us. Let's, I think YD is on the line now. Let's hear from him. Hello, YD. Yes, hello. Yes, YD, as a close associate of Samson Siasia, what do you think could have happened? Well, uh, I think it came as a shock to everybody, and uh, to be honest with you, I I believe uh, uh, something uh, just like you said, I didn't do it uh, ten years ago, but precisely. Probably, I think it was the game they played against, uh, uh, probably against Argentina. You know, uh, but having said that, you know, we need to just be very careful, make sure that we see what is what what the, what the what is being referred to as being violation. And then, you know, then I see what remedies can be followed up. And then, obviously, the man says he didn't do it. And I sincerely believe he did not do it. So what we need to do is just to look for the uh, necessary statutes against what he has said is committed. And then from there, we can look for remedies. That would be my opinion. That would be my option. Because that's the way to handle it. And uh, again, something vehemently clear said that he did not do it. What do you think could be going through the mind of Sans and Siasia now? Because I know you are in touch with him. And what are the implications of this on his reputation? 
Well, obviously, you know, something will be down for now, but I think uh, it needs everybody's support. That's what I think we need to do now. You know, it's in Nigerian. I uh, will expect it in Nigerian, just like every other person. And then when you have issues of this nature, it's the best thing for everybody to do is to support him. And that's what I think we should provide for something serious here now. You know, he has his mom's uh, 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 matter that is following up as well. And this one just came out. So my, my, my advice and uh, my hope to everybody is that we should support him. You know, he's just been accused of something which he has the right to defend himself. And I'm, I'm very sure he will defend himself. And I'm also very sure that something will come out of this very clean. All right. So before we let you go, YD, uh, some observers feel that San Sincerity was not given the opportunity to defend himself fully. What's your, what is your take on this? Uh, obviously, you know, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the ordinary thing anybody will say. Because if you're accusing me of something and you send me emails or probably did not contact me, you have not been given a fair airing, I think it's very wrong. You know, uh, there's this thing about FIFA that they always want to be the right person judging everybody without giving you opportunity to come and defend yourself. I mean, how could you come up with a ban for life without even having the man sit across you on the table to actually hear his side of the story? And that's the reason why, you know, a lot of things need to be changed, you know. In terms of football administration as well, you know, you don't just come out and make those kind of pronouncements. I mean, those kind of pronouncements without having the man, whatever way you have contacted him, to sit across from you to actually invite him and then make sure that all these things are, you are asking him questions and then his answers will then determine what, I mean, with your evidences or whatever, determine what, uh, what punishment you want to give to him. I mean, it's so sad, but then again, like I said, something needs everybody's support and I think that's what we need to provide for something as of now. All right, that was why the is sharing his thoughts with us on this unfortunate situation that we have uh, talking about Samson Siasia, the Samson Siasia saga, so to speak. Well, let's take another break now. When we come back, we'll be talking about the Africa Games that's already on in Rabat, Morocco, and Tony and Oluchi will be joining me. I hope you are enjoying Sportsville. Welcome back. We are now set to roll proper. And let me start by introducing my colleagues. Baby of the house, Oluchi Tobe Subechuku is here. Oluchi, welcome to Sportsville. Thank you so much, George. It's a pleasure to be in the house. It is the month of August, uh, the month of so many sporting activities. And then um, the African Games is also one of them. Yes, the Africa Games will be st has is already on, and uh, you know, our uh, offline Eagles played their first game on Friday out there in Rabat. And Team Nigeria, most of them are there now. Some will be leaving. The first batch has left. The second batch will be leaving, and then the third batch. They are leaving in batches. On that note, let me welcome Tony. Welcome everybody to the show. Tony, welcome to Sportsville. Yeah, thank you, George. It has uh, always been like that. You know, Team Nigeria just uh, leave um, in batches. I remember the previous games. And you know how it is. You know the euphoria. You know the enthusiasm. You know the ambience of the game. Mm -hmm. You know in an African games and uh, Team Nigeria from all the sports that are participating, they've really been talking tough. And uh, you know they give you the type of uh, optimism that indeed you think or know that Nigeria will definitely excel at the end of the games. Let's just wish. I hope you know that at the end Nigeria will just uh, climb the podium, not just uh, finishing behind South Africa, but at least being the number one as uh, they did in 2003 when Nigeria hosted. Okay, when Nigeria hosted, we won it, but this time, let's put our fingers crossed, but it's all well in Team Nigeria's camp. I don't know about that. Uh, the first batch left to talk about footballers, but those who are going to win medals for us are still here, as far as I'm concerned. Talk about the wrestlers, Igali and his team. They were uh, unveiled just uh, two days back, and they are still here in Nigeria. And to me, these are the people that the Africa game should be all about, not footballers who are going there. Tony, let's be sincere with ourselves. <laughs> going with uh, a contingent of uh, 22 footballers, 
male and female and all that. How many medals are going? Are two, going two to medals, win? two medals coming two, from <laughs> two medals. That's to continue. Forty-four you know, number of people. Uh, Tony has been very optimistic about the African Games, and um, I must at least um, give him kudos uh, for that. Coming from his history and background as a former, you know, public relations uh, officer of uh, the NOC. You know, but um, uh, like you said, those individual sports that are there that we should give us as many uh, medals as possible. Uh, you mentioned the wrestlers. I, yes. I must tell you that they, ha they haven't failed us. You know, Egalia has been there. The team they are up and doing, and we must expect you know so much medals coming from the wrestlers. And don't forget that the Bayasta uh, state governor also nominated him as uh, one of the commissioners. You know, to be unveiled. So so much boost from that. I talk about him being commissioner. Yeah. How many days more? There's election in Bayasta in November. I, I I don't know about your calendar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know what the governor. Okay. You are just in a very, very. I don't know if you are in a bad mood because you are starting to throw stones yourself. I'm so not you know, throwing any stones. How you throw, many days as commissioner? The the election, election, I'm not just talking about the election. Even, even our football footballers. Uh, footballers. Yes, I'm talking about football. Our wrestlers are win medals for us. Are here. And we are taking a continent of over This is a, this is a team sport. We are yes. talking about the Africa Games. We are yes. not talking about. Uh, Nations Cup, football, and all those things. Exactly. Agreed. George is, is a team game. Mm -hmm. And almost, there is no player that is far more important than others. I agree that the... Uh, we should have taken know, our wrestlers there. We should have taken our table tennis players These things there. are planned. Okay. It, is, it is according to the calendar of the events, when the events are starting. Mm -hmm. You don't just take the wrestlers to go and keep them, you know, they just become... Uh, you know, go they, there without oh, training. It's not good for them to train in Morocco. No, George, they are training. George, I'm training. <laughs> okay, Tony, I'm not training. George, I have the insights, <laughs> and I must tell you yes. that the wrestlers, mm -hmm. this is according to their plans. Yes. They are here training with their, you know, with their training Which, uh, opponents. Yes. Yes. You know, sparring partners. Mm -hmm. They can't just go there. It has always been like that. Even at the Olympic Games, okay. even at the Commonwealth Games, they always, a guy knows what he does, you know, because most of his timing, you cannot just go there to expose these wrestlers to okay. other wrestlers. All right, uh, let's go straight to the show. Let's talk about. Uh, let's start with. Uh, the, we're already talking about the Africa Games, and I like, like I said, everything truly, sincerely speaking, is not uh, well in Team Nigeria's camp. And you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's go straight to Aaron Okwadri. He said he may not be able to represent Nigeria when table tennis events start on Tuesday, except his medicals and welfare is taken care of. Aaron Okwadri said he has been playing through pains, even when he won the Nigeria Open here in uh, Lagos. And Haruna is bitter, and uh, he is being sincere. He spoke exclusively to us. Let's hear Aaron Okwadri speak. It will be taken to all African games, but uh, it's not going to be just about Arun or Kodri. We are going to be five playing in the team. So we, we have to be very careful. We have been playing like 11 days now, non-stop. I personally am injured. I'm playing with pain. So I think uh, before I will be ready for African games, I really need some kind of treatment. Nigeria needs to take good care of me because I've been representing Nigeria since 11 days non-stop. If I can be taken good care of, of course I'll be ready for African games. If not, probably I'm going to be on the bench. All right, I hope you enjoy Sports View. When we come back, we'll now talk about Nigeria's beat to host the world. You know, we've been analyzing it, talk about uh, the Women's World Cup, the Under-20 Women's World Cup, Nigeria 2020. The FIFA team has come and gone, and they'll be back again, hopefully in November, to do a further appraisal of Nigeria's beat. But one area that will be a source of worry is the area of security. And uh, we will be talking with uh, the Chief Security Advisor to the Nation's Soccer Governing Body, NFF, uh, CP Umar. He will be coming live all the way from Abuja to speak to us after this break. I hope you enjoy Sports View. Right, welcome back. Uh, I just hope that uh, Nigeria will get it right. Talk about the bid to host the world and everything points to the fact that we'll get it because as we speak now, all the facilities are, let me say, 90% in place. Touches here and there in uh, Lagos and then in Benin. And Samuel Obumundia Stadium is nearing completion. The FIFA team said, yes, a lot of work to do, but they will be back in November. Tony, looking at uh, Nigeria's bid, one area 
you pointed out last week is the area of security. But if you look at in terms of facilities, government guarantee, the vice president said, yes, we are going to host and we are supporting this bid. That, that's um, absolute. That's um, a heavyweight confirmation of how ready the government is. Exactly. And uh, in any country, you know, be it even in the advanced country, the government comes to, you know, provide assurance mm -hmm. of their involvement. I think that one is taken, you know, that almost everything is ready. But be that as it may, George, I, government good thing they have promised they are going to do this, they are going to do that. And uh, we're talking about security, George. And uh, if you talk about security, security is not just focused on the players. Mm -hmm. We are talking the about the, George. We are talking about the World Cup. Exactly. It is the World Cup. There is no World Cup that is small. Be it under seventeen, be it uh, under, under 20. twenty, be it at the you know senior level. George is an avenue that opens up a lot of things for the economy. So many fans, so many tourists are going to visit Nigeria. And you and I were talking about the Nigeria that we live in, not just Nigeria that some people, you know, perhaps are just thinking that uh, it was still the same country that they knew before. I knew worried, what it took, George. I knew what it took me. I just came back from Enugu and went by road. Okay. George, the road, <laughs> you were, just an eyesore. We're talking about security. We are talking about fans moving in droves from one city to another, unhindered, uninterrupted. Okay. All know, George, right. <laughs> I don't know what the government is going to do mm. about this. I okay. don't know the type of security they're going to provide. How many policemen are they going to assign to a certain number of? you know, uh, fans that are going to come to this country. I have my worries. I have okay, my fears. Tony has his worries, has his fears, and uh, but when the uh, FIFA team came, one man that was very close to them was the NFF Chief Security Advisor, CP GB Umar. He is the CP in charge of Interpol, Interpol Bureau in Abuja. I will got him to speak exclusively to Sportsville so that uh, he tells us what uh, he shares his thoughts, what the country is planning ahead of uh, FIFA's return in November. Let's hear from CP Omar. Hello, sir. The Nigerian police as well as the other law enforcement agencies that will uh, provide adequate security for the coverage of the 2020 Women World Cup when it comes up next year. The security agencies under my supervision are fully prepared and we are on ground. Uh, we have done some strategies such as um, uh, we have gotten all the threat analysis of the four states in which we have analyzed or we are undergoing analysis of how to overcome any threat. But um, like any other event that has been going on, the security agencies are fully prepared. As far as security is concerned, we are on ground and we will make sure that um, uh, we provide adequate security, not only for the players, but fans and other people that are coming into the country to watch this game. Uh, you are aware that football is uh, an international game. It's a game of the world. It's a global game, a game that is loved by everyone. Even those who are behind the scene on the other world, that is the criminals, or those who intend to do certain things that are unethical. They love football. They abandon all their ideas and they together to watch football. So we, on our own part, we make sure that we are fully prepared to provide adequate security. People don't only come for the football at all. They would like to visit one or two places of interest, like uh, tourist places. Nigeria is a wonderful country with a lot of um, uh, tourist attractions. And I believe that um, uh, coming to Abuja, which is not a center, is a center of excellence. Like in Lagos, there um, are uh, some places that they can go to the beach, they enjoy the sunny side of life. And then there's so many things. Um, uh, we are not. Uh, particularly uh, unprepared or unaware that um, uh, if there is in the event of any threat or in the event of any breakdown of law and order, we quickly ex evacuate. We have a um, means of evacuating every player, every player, every fan, everyone that comes in. So there is lots of uh, preparation in respect of that. So for me and for what we intend to do, the Nigerian police under the watch of the IGP, uh, Adam Mohammed, uh, he has put in place and uh, he has done everything humanly possible to make sure that he has given us all the help and uh, encouragement to do the best when it comes to 2020. Wow, 
thank you very much, uh, CPGB Umar, for speaking uh, to us all the way from Abuja and assuring Nigerians that everything will be in place ahead of the World Cup next year. Should we get the hosting right? Nigeria is fighting for it alongside South Korea and uh, India. But at the end of the day, everything points to Nigeria getting it because a whole lot has already been done. And we have the experience. We have hosted two previous uh, FIFA Under-17 and under 20 tournaments. Only to you had a CPU mark there. Yes, I, I kind of share in his um, optimism, optimism, you know. Um, uh, we've had experiences in uh, 1999 mm -hmm. uh, hosting um, a male version of the same competition. Uh, even in 2003 when we hosted the All African Games, so many countries came in, so many people came in, fans came in. Opportunity for pe some uh, people to even come into the country and not go back and mm -hmm. decide to stay in Nigeria. Nigeria, uh, the cities were carefully picked. Uh, they are not um, volatile areas. They are not, um, of course, people want to talk about um, uh, kidnapping and um, all whatnot, but um, I can assure you that um, when it comes to sporting activities, it, Nigerians get distracted easily and focus on the main events that is um, taking place. And we place. speak the same language and when it comes to sports. <laughs> when okay, we we'll hope sports. so. so <laughs> I hope we will host a, a successful uh, competition. Okay, Tony, come to look at it. Even before the South Africa 2010 World Cups, there was so much issue about security in South Africa. But you saw South Africa hosting a good World Cup. We are all in South Africa together. So who says that uh, with the Nigerian security, chief security officer now telling us that they will be on top of the situation that won't host a good World Cup? That's a good thing for us to, you know, get him, for him to answer and of course speak to millions of Nigerians who watch uh, this channel. And uh, indeed it's really, it's really satisfying, you know, from his responses. But then, like I told you, like a traveling journalist who has been to, you know, grateful to God, giving me the opportunity of being to... You know, all the continents. Well, all the continents, and uh, who have witnessed some of these things. I begin to compare and contrast. I begin to look at things. I hope I'm not being too pessimistic. Mm -hmm. But because of the fact that I'm a Nigerian, I want the best. Yes. So that is exactly what I want. George, we're looking at in terms of transportation. When you're hosting the World Cup, George, we don't have trains here. And George, you know that's the easiest means of transportation mm -hmm. that can take fans out in droves. I remember that George, happened in India. Do you understand? George, you know, exa you know exactly what I'm saying. George, <laughs> from the stadium to Pahara Gaj, straight George, up, you are We are there. talking about good roads. Are we going to guarantee that all the cities that are going to, you know, host, that they will get good roads, you know, before the 2020 uh, So Maybe know, by then, the Lagos uh, Bini Ibadan Expressway would have been completed. Go, go, hopefully, government will speed, but still speed up all that. George, and that just, is the essence of hosting. George, just question marks. Yes. I hope that they will also enter into the forest. You and know, go and to the forest. Frisk out all okay. these food loops. <laughs> okay. You know, that are harassing the rising, we are listening the rising to us. people. Yeah, George, uh, I, it's, it's just... It's not just for somebody to speak on phone and give us assurances. Yes. We want things that are done. Things that are but he has said it here that the Nigerian police will be on top of their game and that they will collaborate with other security agencies and even the fans themselves because when it comes to sports, Nigerians speak the same language. No doubt about that. Aoluchi was perfect, you know, when she spoke. Yes. And then, you know, John, we need to raise all these things so yes. that the security we'll people will also see perspective. As in, I want this thing to be hosted, but okay. then I want it to be done well. I don't want it to be an avenue where people come and also paint you know, what pictures okay. on Nigeria. Yes. Because the eyes of the world are already on Nigeria. Okay, beyond uh, facilities being in place, security is one big area and it's good that uh, we've heard from uh, CP Umar, who is the NFF Chief Security Advisor. Let's take another break now. When we come back, we'll talk about the Super Sunday, <laughs> the big one today. The EPL has started and you saw the Super Cup, Liverpool not working alone at all in Istanbul. All that for you when we come back and I hope you are enjoying Sportsville.
All right, welcome back. We're coasting home now. Well, let's give you the upcoming events. August 23 to 25, the CAF Champions League preliminary second leg and the CAF Confederation Cup prelim second leg too. And uh, don't forget that our own Enimba, they will up against Rahimo of Burkina Faso. And uh, Kanupilas will take their slim 3-2 lead against Ashanti Kotoko, the Porcupines at the Kumasi Stadium. And then August 25, World Judo Championship in Japan. August 26 to September, August 26th to September now you talk about the US Open, this is a big one, the Grand Slam, uh, one of the Grand Slam events of the year. And August 19th, talk about the 12th All Africa Games opening ceremony. You can see all that launched by my producer there for you and follow all those upcoming events. That's the show. Let me say a big thank you to Baby of the House, Oluchi. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And Tony. Thank you so much. And let's also thank uh, one of us uh, who is just watching from the side, Nancy. You know, she's always... Uh, a delight to be with you know off uh, the cameras okay one of these days she'll begin to get it right nancy is a student of uh, anambra state university only that's the show we'll see you next week bye bye and god bless